guys, Arlisha here and welcome to my floor. We're sitting on the floor today because I just wanted to chat with you guys about how I make money as artists. You guys have been sending me some really awesome questions over in the community tab. So I'm going to be answering some of those and I'm also sitting on the floor because I'm very tired. So in this video, I want to talk to you guys about the different ways that I make money, my different sources of income, how they balance each other out with time management, and I'm even going to be sharing with you guys towards the end how much money I make as an artist. And of course, the way I do it is going to be different from what a lot of other artists do. Every artist kind of has their own path professionally, which is amazing and perfect and is kind of a great thing about being able to do a job like this. Everyone can work out a system that works for them. I'm not making this video because I feel like I make a ton of money or I have arrived at peak income levels as an artist. I've just been doing this for a couple of years now and I remember how many questions I had starting out and there just weren't a lot of places where I could go to find answers. So I'm hoping that this can just be one piece of information for you guys. I won't be able to answer every question there is about being a professional artist, but I do want to talk to you guys about as much as I can. I'm super grateful to even get to make this video for you guys, and for that I have to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. As you guys probably already know, I use Skillshare not just as a student where I learn tons of information from their more than 25,000 classes on business and art and design and illustration and painting, I also use Skillshare as a teacher and that's going to come into play a lot during the course of this video. I found it to be the most effective way for me to get to learn from professionals in their fields. So if I want to learn about how to use Photoshop, I can go straight to professionals and it's almost like just getting to sit with them, ask them questions via class projects or discussions, and learn directly from professionals. I think that on YouTube there's so much free content that we can kind of take for granted sometimes how valuable it is to be able to connect more directly with professionals, and Skillshare really does provide that kind of at every level. So when I was just getting started with art and there were things I wanted to know, I was able to learn about drawing and painting from Skillshare. When I wanted to start a YouTube channel, I could learn about how to use Premiere Pro and how to edit thumbnails and make my photos look nice. And now as my business is growing, there's so much information out there about running your own website and online store and time management, productivity. It's just been a big help to me every step of the way. Premium membership on Skillshare gives you unlimited access to every single class on the platform. If you guys are interested in joining over 7 million other creators on Skillshare to learn, there's a link down in the description where you can try Skillshare Premium for free for two months. So please do check that out if you're interested. So in talking about how I make money as an artist, we're just going to go ahead and start right at the beginning. My very first professional endeavor as an artist wasn't starting a YouTube channel or even having a huge following on Instagram. My very first thing that I did where I'm like, I want to make art professionally was in publishing my first Skillshare class. So when I published my first Skillshare class about two years ago, I had a very, very tiny following. I had maybe 150 followers on Instagram and maybe 150 subscribers on YouTube, but I wasn't even making videos about the kind of art I do now. I was painting board game miniatures, so not really a lot of interest there. My first Skillshare class was on how to draw hands, and I was definitely relying on the Skillshare student base to promote that class and get some students coming in. If you're not familiar with how earning money on Skillshare works, how it works is you get paid for every premium minute watched. And what that means is for every student who watches your class who has a premium membership, for each minute that they watch, I get paid a certain amount per minute. That amount varies from month to month, but Skillshare's blog will tell you that that number varies between 5 and 10 cents per premium minute. I found that it usually actually averages between 5 and 6 cents per premium minute. That's just been my experience over the past couple of years. Now my first full month of teaching, I think that during that month I published a second class as well. So that first full month I actually made like $400 on Skillshare, which is kind of a big deal, especially if you have a YouTube channel and you're familiar with how the monetization system works. Now I was really lucky when I started my YouTube channel then, my first video, my first art related video was actually in promotion of my Skillshare class. So I started teaching on Skillshare and started my YouTube channel for art right around the same side. They've always worked side by side next to each other, always. 
and on YouTube it takes time to even get monetized. I was really fortunate that I had started my YouTube channel before the changes and the current system of monetization was in place, so I was already being monetized for the few painting videos I was doing for board game miniatures, so my channel has pretty much always been monetized since I became a partner way back a long time ago. That being said, the amount of money I was making in those first few months on Skillshare is pretty much the amount of money I'm making on YouTube now each month. So right out of the gate, I was able to generate more income on Skillshare, teaching classes, definitely way more than I was able to on YouTube first getting started. On YouTube, it was kind of trickling in at pennies every day, especially because my following was so small. So that's how I got started teaching on Skillshare. I know I've done lots of sponsored videos for them, and I genuinely do support this platform, especially because it's really what has enabled me to step away from the full-time job that I had prior to doing art and work on this full-time. Once I started teaching on Skillshare and I started making art videos on YouTube, I focused for a while on just building those platforms, growing my audiences in those places, and I was also using Instagram. So regular Instagram posts, regular YouTube videos, and a Skillshare class. I've made 12 Skillshare classes in the past two years, which means that I've been averaging like one every other month, but I know that a lot of those first classes were crammed into the first few months, so the frequency has slowed down. I think there was actually one time where there was almost six months between two Skillshare classes. So I want to jump ahead a bit to where I am now and the different sources of income I have currently, right now, and then we'll kind of break those apart. So right now I earn money through Skillshare, YouTube ad revenue, my shop online, sponsored videos, affiliate links, oh, and also Patreon. That's new, but very exciting. I'm not including in that products that I get sent for free to review for the channel. That's not necessarily income, but it is nice because it does support my business, and especially if it's something that I use frequently, it means I didn't have to buy that thing. It wasn't a business expense, I just got it for free. One of the biggest questions you guys had was about prints or starting an online shop. How to do it, when to do it. One of the biggest things I would say is you don't have to rush into doing something like that. If you're seeing other artists who are opening shops and things like that, but you're not sure if you have a big enough following to do that, you don't have to rush. Just keep creating content. And to be honest, if people want to see merchandise from you, oftentimes they'll ask. Like they might see a piece they really like and say, hey, is there a way I can get this as a print or as a sticker or something? And if you are feeling like you're really itching to get started, like I definitely was, I opened up a shop on Redbubble. Now sites like Redbubble and Society6 and Inprint, I think, they allow you to upload your high resolution image files and then they will print the merchandise for you and ship it out to your customers. This is really nice because it's a good way to dip your toes into working with an online shop without having that initial investment of a scanner and a printer and then going through the hassle of trying to learn about all of those things. So I started on Redbubble. I will say that over the first several months, maybe the first six months to a year, I'm not exactly sure, that was a really slow growth. So the first couple months I might not have had any sales, and then when you do have sales, especially on Redbubble for example, the default profit margin is actually only like 20%. So if I sold a sticker for two dollars, I only made a few cents on that sticker, so the actual amount of money that you're making per sale is pretty low. Either way, I think it's a really good way to get started because you start to learn about how to edit your photos and how to edit product images. It lets you take things one step at a time, and then when you're ready to invest in more, you can. You can also go through sites that will just print prints for you. I used cat print when I was first wanting to make prints and be able to ship them from my home so that I could customize packaging and make it a bit more personal. That was really nice overall because the, the interface was really easy to use. When I had questions, the people were really nice to work with. The only issue I had was actually not necessarily their fault. I had a really old monitor for my computer at the time, and the result was that when I would get my prints, the colors weren't calibrated properly. Now, if you get prints from a site and you're not 
not satisfied with the quality, that can be a headache because you either have to send them back or repurchase prints. Sometimes they will send them back and reprint them just at a discounted rate so you still have to pay again. And the biggest issue for me was actually just waiting. So that whole process, it could take me months to get prints that I was happy with in my hands and ready to sell. And that was just a headache. So over time, I did invest in my own scanner and my own printer. So now I print all of my prints and my stickers from home. So based on the breakdown of the different income systems that I have, it's a combination of active income and passive income. So some of these things are active income sources. There's usually a boost in ad revenue on YouTube when I publish a new video. The same thing goes for Skillshare. So while those things are kind of active because I have to keep making new content, they're also generating income in the background. So videos I've made in the past those are generating income. Skillshare classes that I've made in the past, those are generating income. And I don't have to actively work to make money on those things every single day. The most active thing that I do is definitely my shop, because whenever I make money on my shop, whether it's selling stickers or prints or an original painting, that requires active work time from me. I have to prepare the packages, get everything shipped out. And of course, I just have to make artwork to sell. Having a balance between passive income and active income, things that you have to actively work on versus things that could just go on in the background is so, so important. I see artists oftentimes who try to make too many full-time jobs for themselves. So you might take commissions and you sell prints and you have a Patreon page and you have a YouTube channel. And if those things aren't properly balanced, it's like having four full-time jobs at once and it's just way too much to balance. And I see artists get burned out so, so, so quickly. It's definitely taken time for me to learn what that balance means for me, where I want to focus most of my time, and when I want to have a surge of productivity, usually in the form of making a new class. But I also have confidence in the fact that if I was to step away from making content for an entire month, so if I didn't make any YouTube videos, I didn't make any Skillshare classes, I closed down my shop for a month, I didn't make any Instagram posts, I'm still going to generate revenue because I have my stock of Skillshare classes, I have my YouTube videos, and I have affiliate links in my video descriptions. All of that stuff is going to be generating income for me even if I step away. So I want to show you guys a bit of what these numbers actually look like. I have two different pie charts to show you. One of them is the month of April from this year, and the other is the month of May. There's no guarantee, of course, that income is going to be exactly the same from month to month. And as you can see, these pie charts don't look exactly the same as one another. There are some things that are similar, like affiliate income was about the same. And what I mean by affiliate links, which is I am an affiliate of several companies like Amazon, Jackson's Art Supplies, Blick Art Materials, and also Arteza. I can put affiliate links to products that I use in specific videos. And if you guys purchase using those links, I make a small commission. Now I always list that in all of my video descriptions. So you guys know if you are using affiliate links, it doesn't cost anything extra for you guys to use them. And thank you so much if you have done that because it's really helpful. So anyway, that's what I mean by affiliate links. As you can see, there are some things like sponsored videos, depending on how many of those I do in a month, YouTube ad revenue, those things the last couple of months have been pretty similar to one another. The variables then in the past couple of months have actually just been in my shop and in my Skillshare class. So in April, I focused on some big shop updates. I sold several original paintings, which of course always go for a higher price point, And I also launched a new sticker pack I intentionally planned to focus a bit more effort on those things and the sales from my shop rose because of that. In May, my shop sales were much smaller and I'm okay with that because in May we saw a jump in revenue from Skillshare because at the end of April, coming into the beginning of May, I published a new gouache Skillshare class. So I'm kind of choosing each month a big project that I want to focus on, something I want to put a surge of effort into in hopes that it will return a higher income in that specific category. I can't try to make everything as high as possible every single month. At least that doesn't work for me. I just end up feeling overworked and exhausted and burned out and I don't actually want to create anything new. Speaking of creating new things, you guys had also asked me how I maintain motivation to keep creating and making new art for my shop. And the honest answer is that I don't. I don't update my shop all of the time. I think that would kind of ruin my creative process if I was trying to get something new on my shop every week, even if it was just one artwork that I made of a print. And I also don't force myself to turn every piece of art that I make 
into a print. I can't focus on my shop every single month because I know I'm going to be focusing on YouTube and I'm going to be making new posts for my patrons and I'm going to be community building on Instagram and I have to kind of balance things out. So what I like to do instead is every couple of months when I've built up a small stock of art that I've created over that time, then I'll list some new originals, some new prints, some new stickers, and I'll just do it in bulk instead of trying to make it all happen at once. That does mean that my shop overall isn't as super high functioning or high trafficked as some other artists may be, but I've just chosen that I'm happy that my shop exists, I'm happy that it's there, I'm happy that I can sell those things and give products to you guys, but it's not my highest priority as a creator. That spot definitely falls to making new YouTube videos and making new Skillshare content. Of course, I think it's important to mention things that I won't really be discussing in this video, primarily just because I don't know about them. So some people ask about art school. I did not go to art school. I considered it once I wanted to learn more about art, but it ultimately didn't work out for me at this time in my life because I have kids that I want to be here for, and I'm happy that I made that decision because I'm happy with the workload that I have now and the professional focus that I have now, and I wouldn't want that to change. I also don't really do commissions. A lot of people had asked about that. I make my own artwork, I sell my own artwork, I make YouTube videos and Skillshare content, but I've never really opened commissions or gone to any conventions. I'm not saying I would never do those things, but currently they seem like a lot of work and a lot of stress for me, and I don't need to do them, so I don't. Another thing that I'm not going to be talking about a ton in this video is how I price, create, and ship my prints or things for my online shop. I'm planning a video for sometime in July about how I run my online shop and that's going to include how I make new prints and stickers, how I price everything, how I ship everything. So that's going to be coming to you guys in July. So that'll be coming soon. You guys also had a lot of questions about the importance of building an audience. Should I focus on building an audience first before I start doing things to earn revenue? My personal experience says that when you're first getting started, before you quit your job, before you're going, I need art to make money, you should focus on building a community. And I'm not just talking about building a base of customers so that when you promote something, they will pay for it. Build a community, connect with other creators. That really is the most important way to start. I started my Instagram account first to share what I was creating, to get feedback from other artists and connect with people. And there are some creators that I connected with way back when I started my Instagram page back in 2016 that I still talk to now and we're good friends and that means a lot to me. And that was before I even thought that I could make money doing art. But you can also build a community alongside promoting professional things, and I think that that's really important. I think it's really common for artists to start to feel guilty when they start to promote professional things. So if your Instagram account has just been a sharing sort of thing, or doing art trades or collaborations with different artists, and then all of a sudden you're starting to tell people, hey, you should go watch my new YouTube video, or you should buy something from my shop, or you should check out my new Skillshare class, it can feel like it's coming out of nowhere and like you're trying to sell things to people in the very beginning. And I definitely felt that when I was first getting started. These days though, it's just what I'm doing. I want to share what I'm doing with my community. And sometimes what I'm doing is a new Skillshare class or is new products for my shop. And because I've been building those things side by side, my hope is that my community doesn't feel like it's just a sales pitch anymore. It's an exciting new thing that I'm really looking forward to presenting to them. A couple of tips about how to actually build an online audience. And I would say the number one thing is consistency. If you want to make Instagram posts five times a week, do it. Put those posts out there. It's not even about making sure each post has 50 different hashtags so you know you're covering all your bases. That's actually ineffective and doesn't really work very well. You gotta be consistent. So I usually try to post to Instagram like five to seven times a week, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I have to create five to seven new art pieces every week. Sometimes I'll be sharing sketchbook spreads or behind the scenes stuff, work in progress on a new piece or snippets from the next video that's coming up because I've been working really hard over the past year or so to get out of the mindset of telling myself I have to create so I have things to post on Instagram or so I have things to sell or so I have things to share on YouTube. So if you find that you naturally work at a slower pace, it's okay to share work in progress shots of what you're working on, or maybe give people a snapshot of your workspace, show people the kinds of art supplies that you use. 
For example, the piece I created in my last video, I actually turned the creation of this one piece into four Instagram posts. So there was work in progress stuff, there were snippets from the video review, and instead of having to create four different pieces of art so I would have something to post each time, I turned that one piece of art and its creation process into several different posts. If you're not sure if you're at a skill level where you're ready to open a shop or start commissions or whatever it is you would like to do, you can just test the waters, give it a shot, and see if there's any response. See if anyone is interested. There's no harm in starting and in trying. If people want what you're creating, then they'll let you know. And if not, then there's nothing wrong with taking time to keep learning, keep developing, keep growing your skill, and finding the type of art you want to create. There's no pressure to need for things to make money right away. That's pretty much just a sure recipe for burning out and failing without allowing things time to grow organically. So to kind of wrap things up, let's talk about some actual numbers. So I looked at my income just for the year of 2019, where we're at so far, through the month of May for my income, and I wanted to share some average numbers with you. On average, from sponsored videos, I make about $300 a month, and that can vary a lot if I have one sponsored video in a month, two sponsored videos in a month, no sponsored videos in a month, it varies. And the rate that I get paid per sponsored video, that can vary a lot depending on your audience size. From my affiliate links, so those are the links that you click in the description of my videos to buy products, I usually average about $120 a month from those. On Patreon, which is brand new, thank you patrons, I average about $200, $230 a month. My shop this so far this year has averaged about $300 a month. On YouTube, here, making videos, I average so far this year about $400 a month. And the biggest portion of my income as an artist is from Skillshare, and I'm averaging there about $2,700 a month, which is crazy. That's probably about $1,000 higher than my average per month for last year in 2018. So I hope you guys don't mind a lot of sharing of individual numbers. I know that a lot of artists don't share this kind of stuff, and I can totally and completely understand people who want to keep this sort of information private. But a lot of these sources are things that any artist can grow in. Anybody can start a YouTube channel if they want to. Anybody can teach on Skillshare. Anybody can have an online shop. These numbers may vary a lot depending on where you're at, how long you've been doing it. There are some artists who make a ton more money at this stuff than I do, and there are some people who are just starting out and aren't earning as much. There are so many different ways that it can fluctuate, but I wanted to at least share my experiences with you. To give a little bit of context to those numbers, I currently have about 60 64, 65,000 subscribers on YouTube. We just hit 20,000 subscribers on Instagram. Thank you so much. And I have about 6,500 followers on Skillshare and all of my classes together is over 15,000 students. So far in 2019, I'm averaging about $4,000 a month as an artist. Now this number is definitely different from 2018 and that's kind of crazy how different it is. Last year, I made about $23,000, $24,000 in 2018. If my numbers were to continue at their current rate in 2019, I would be averaging closer to $48,000 for the entire year. That may seem like a lot to you, it feels like a lot to me, and in my brain I'm, I keep thinking that everything's just gonna tank and things will crash and I'll end up with way less, I don't know. And the great thing is, is I don't need to do this job and I feel very very blessed to be able to say that. My husband works and the way we live our lives we don't need as much to function as a family, so if I was to quit my job that would be fine and we would make it by, but the fact that I am able to earn this money means that we can just do more things, which is really exciting, so thank you. But one more thing I do want to take just a second to talk about is taxes. While I talked about making $23,000, $24,000 last year, if you take out expenses, business expenses, my number dropped down to like $16,000. So a big chunk from $23,000 to $16,000 when you take out expenses. I had some big expenses in 2018, like um, my printer and all of my printing supplies. I got a new monitor for my computer, probably got a new graphics card, lots of new things that I needed that were big ticket items. And over the course of the year, that's just how much it cost to run my business last year. 
and that's just expenses. That doesn't calculate in the money that actually comes out for taxes, and that can be another 15 to 25 percent of that $16,000 that has to get paid in taxes every year. So what started as $23,000 can easily drop down to 12, something like that. It's, it's crazy. It seems like half. So like it's so half, it's half. So to go from 23 to like 12, and that's an estimate. I don't remember the exact numbers, but between business expenses and taxes, a lot can come out of that number. So while my projected income for 2019 may be close to between 40 and $50,000, that doesn't calculate in taxes or business expenses. So that number could be reduced by as much as half, which is kind of a lot. So I'm just giving you my information. I'm just sharing my experiences with you. I've been doing this for about two years now, and that's where I'm at. I definitely want to make more videos like this in the future where there's already so much going on in this video and I know that there are going to be things that will be separated out into their own video. Speaking of separate things, I've talked about balancing projects a bit. So you have larger things that you're working on, smaller things that you're working on, and so many things have to fit together. If you guys are interested in learning more about this, I'm so excited to share with you that my newest Skillshare class that may or may not be out when this video is published is actually going to be about how to build an online presence and have healthy social media strategies and habits as an artist. So as soon as that class is published, I will of course make sure there's a link down in the description and I will let you guys know in the community tab when it's published. I don't know if it'll be out when this video goes out or not. I'm still working on it. It's almost done. But I'm really excited that that class is coming. I have so much information to share with you guys there and it's going to be just way more in depth than I can get into when it comes to how to build an audience than I can in just one YouTube video. So I hope you guys will check that out when it's here. Thank you guys. Thank you for sitting with me for so long. It feels like I've done a lot of rambling, so I'm gonna go sit at my computer and hope that I can edit together a video that makes some kind of sense for you. More than anything else, I just wanted to share my experiences and how I've earned income up to this point. If you guys are interested in checking out a two month free trial of Skillshare Premium, just the link is in the description. It's a great platform. They really have encouraged and enabled me as a creator to take my art and my professional endeavors to the next level and I couldn't be more grateful for the opportunity to be sponsored by them. Links are in the description. Have a wonderful day everybody and I will see you guys in the next video.